Hello! Oh, video game tat, it's been too long. No, it really has been too long. It's been like over a year since I did one of these. I just, I'd completely forgotten they were a thing. Until I was clearing out the spare room and discovered a load of boxes with plastic statues in, each of which was the size of a small planet. And I thought, do you know what? Probably time I cleaned this out. And we shall start with one of these giant statues from by far the most recent game we are dealing with. Presenting... Boom. Watch Dogs 2. San Francisco edition, which means it's, I don't know, got a picture of San Francisco on the front or something, which is where the game's set, isn't it? I don't bloody know. I haven't played it much yet, but I've quite liked what I've played. Um, Watch Dogs um, went down a similar path, I think, to the early Assassin's Creed, where Assassin's Creed 1 kind of felt unfinished, almost felt sort of tech demo y, do you know what I mean? As if they hadn't quite inserted the game. And then Assassin's Creed 2 came along and. Yep. Managed to get that one right. A similar thing with Watch Dogs, really. The first one felt a little bit um, light. I don't know. It, wouldn't, it felt kind of vaguely unfinished and unsatisfying, I think is the word. Whereas the second one, yeah, has a lot more to it and seems to be more fun than that. And that is the closest you'll get to a review of a new game on this channel. Um, yeah, also quite nice is that uh, the second one is less po-faced and has more of a sense of humour and appears to have been quite heavily inspired by that Mr. Robot TV series. Anyway, we're just here to look at the statue, so then do that. Let's skip this bit off. Now, the Ubisoft statues are usually very good. In fact, generally, if you show one along with some other things, it kind of shows them up a bit. But we shall... Oh, no, there's a flap. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A vertical flap. There it is. It is a man. I don't know the character's name. I can't remember. Let's pull him out. Ooh, hang on. But first, what's in his drawers? Oh yeah, this is where the game was. Interestingly, I bought this one myself. Usually I nick these off other people, but uh, it was £30 new with the Xbox One version of the game. The cheapest I could find the game without the statue was £40 at the time. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense to me either. Right, here are some stickers. You are being watched with an eyeball on it. Ah, oh, they've been defaced or something like that. Well, that stickers then, isn't it? Uh, this is, uh, you can now complete your Uplay Shop diorama. <laughs> <coughs> That's probably not going to happen, is it? Um, by buying uh, Wrench there, who stands beside Marcus. That's his name. Um, Watch Dogs 2 Map of San Francisco. Is it actually a map of San Francisco? <gasps> Yes, it is. Oh, wow. And it's got some writings on it. And you know what? It's a map. It's not going to be that interesting, is it? But what is in the envelope? A very cardboardy envelope. It's some postcards, by the looks of it. We have a man using a phone and wearing headphones. Always nice. Totally blank in the back. Something that looks a bit like a cross between Watch Dogs 2 and Firewatch. And some people up on a skyscraper flipping us off. You bastards. Well, that was exciting, wasn't it? <clears throat> I think we should just have a look at the plug. Oh, man, I can actually live in one of those boxes. Right, here he is. He's got a phone. Do you see? I'm going to have to take him out here, aren't I? Oh, this is going to take a minute. I think we're going to have to jump cut to when it's complete, which didn't take as long as I thought, frankly. Right, here he is. Can we see his face? Not really, it's mostly covered, which I imagine he's doing for privacy concerns. He's got the old Watch Dogs logo on his uh, face mask there. He's also got a hat that actually says Dedsec on it, so perhaps anonymity isn't that much of a thing. He's got pie and an irritant symbol and a little Dedsec dead badge on his strap there. He's got some dark glasses. There's his phone. Look, with a decal on it. And some sort of stun gun thing he has in the game. And there's his messenger bag where he keeps drones in and stuff, I believe. And he spent an awful lot of time uh, grafting things onto the bottom of his trousers there. Well, it's a hobby, isn't it? So what's it like as a statue then? <clears throat> well, I'm going to say... Whoop, and then I'm going to tell you what I think of it as a statue. Um, no, it's pretty good, actually. As with most of these Ubisoft things, it's nicely... Well, very well painted, actually. It's nicely designed. It's well put together. If you really want the bloke from Watch Dogs 2 who is called Marcus on a shelf, there is no better cereal. Stand up, Marcus. There's people watching, mate. That's better. 
Oh dear. Right, well I'll tell you what I've got now. Some stuff from the first Watch Dogs game that I had completely forgotten I had. Although it's nowhere near as interesting. These are more promotional items, but they're things you might not have seen. Now Watch Dogs, as you may have guessed, was promoted via the method of USB drive devices quite a lot. Because it's technology in it and it fits with the theme of the game, yes. The first of them was a bit boring. It's literally just a USB drive with Watch Dogs written on it. Plop. The second one's a bit more interesting. It's a sort of rubbery band. Oh, bloody hell, that's been in a dusty shell for a while. Um, it's a rubber band that fits around your wrist, and you can then wear your Watch Dogs 4 gigabyte memory stick thing with pride. Quite why you'd do that, I don't know. Maybe your mother never loved you. And finally, the interesting one. Yes, I like this much more because there's a little puzzle aspect to it, which again fits the theme of the game. So it's a key ring. Has the older watchdog skull thingy on the back, made out of old ASCII code. But wait for it. Spin it, or is that ANSI where it's got the blocks in? I can't remember. Give it a spin, and the USB part is revealed. I quite like that. It's a nice little thing to sit there and fiddle with whilst you're bored at a piano recital. Anyway, we need to get another massive box in now, so we're going to have to do another jump cut in order to reveal an even bigger box from Batman Arkham Origins Collector's Edition. Includes Deathstroke DLC that nobody gives a shit about. So, Batman Arkham Origins, the third in the Arkham series of games with old Batsy in. They did four at the end, didn't they? There was uh, Arkham Asylum. Probably my favourite, that. Uh, except for those bits where you have to repeatedly tap a button to pull out a grate. Come on, guys. That adds nothing to the game. It's just annoying. Then there was Arkham City, which was a bit more open-worldy. Then there was Arkham Origins, this one, and more recently Arkham Knight. Um, I really loved the first two, but at the end of Arkham City I did feel like I don't really want to be playing this anymore. Um, quite fed up with the whole setup now, as much as I enjoyed it at the time. And indeed, when I started playing Arkham Origins, I played it for like five minutes, I was like, ah, I can't really be bothered. But apparently it's not nearly as good as the others anyway, so I didn't miss much. I might go and catch Arkham Knight at some point in the future. Perhaps I'm ready for more Arkham Joy now. Maybe I am. Tell you what I would be ready for. That Deathstroke DLC, which is printed straight on, being in the same bloody resolution as the rest of it. Look, nice high-res print, shitty low-res blown-up JPEG. Thanks, guys. Well, that's ruined my life. Wait, I may be over-exaggerating slightly. Right, let's pull this thing off. Chuck that to one side. Open this I, can't, I haven't looked in this for years. I don't actually know what's in it. Uh, that's where the game was. Uh, this was another one I bought cheap, so I sold the game on. This one, if I recall, it was worth money at the time. There's a book and an envelope. And uh, the big statue. Let's have a quick look at the book first. I think this is what we in the trade call an art book, which is like a book and it's full of art. I'm not getting too technical there, am I? So, yeah, it'll just be pictures of stuff in the game, won't it, really? Oh, some words as well. Words are always good. And there's a picture of Ames Kirshen. Thank goodness for that. And Todd Keller. Bum, 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 bum. Giving away bits of the game. So this one, I believe, was set before the other Arkham games when uh, Batman was much younger and like the Joker was new on the scene and Black Mask was opening a club for fans of 80s disco. I don't bloody know. Lots of that going on. Yeah, yeah. Art book, art book, art book. Seems like quite a nice one. Warning! Do not open until story complete. Oh, well that's going to spoil it for me then, isn't it? Hmm, is this game old enough for us to show spoilers? Do you know what? Yes it is. Um, if you don't want it spoiled, look away now! As we go into... Assassin Agreement. Oh yeah, that was the plot of the game. Black Mask has uh, recruited a load of assassins to go and fuck Batman's shit up. Um, oh, it's just bits of cardboard with um, what look like uh, police bulletins as the characters. That's not actually very interesting at all. I was expecting something amazing to add to the game story. But I was mostly wrong. And by mostly I mean completely. Right, let's get this thing out then. Good God, I've actually forgotten what this one looked like. Right, this can go over there somewhere. And fill the room entirely full of empty cardboard boxes that are now collapsing. Whoa! And Batman and the Joker have escaped, because it's got the Joker in, because it's always got the bleeding Joker in. Oh, isn't the Joker dead in Arkham Knight? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe he comes back from the ed dead at the end, because he always bleeding does. Oh, a little uh, plate on the bottom there. Batman, Arkham Origins. And there is Batman, looking very pissed off. 
and other such noises he's making as he lifts up an early design of the Joker where he's got like a purple trench coat. And the Joker's very happy with it all, because, you know, that's kind of the only thing he can be, isn't it? Um, this is nice. This is very nice, actually. Again, well painted, well designed, well sculpted, well put together. It's a big solid thing. Let's put that over there, actually. I can see a problem with it from a design point of view, though. It's a difficult one to display, because basically you can either show Batman in all his lovely detail there, or you can show the Joker, because one of them's going to have their back to you at all times. Oh, well, there we are. You can rotate it every so often and add a Batman Arkham Origins rotation to your cleaning routine, and what a day you will have. Is Batman kneeing the Joker in the kneecap there? That's a little bit vicious, isn't it? Naughty Batman. It's not like the Joker's killed loads of... Oh, wait. Right, let's have that there. Stay. And we shall look at some more little bits, this time from Far Cry 4, because we're always on the cutting edge here. Yeah, Far Cry 4 is bloody ancient. I don't think we even announced the next Far Cry. Oh, was there? No, wait, they had like a Far Cry tribal game, did they? I don't know. I have got very confused with the numbers of Far Cry games. So instead, I'm going to look at this small bobblehead of the villain from the game Pagan Min. It's a bit like that bobblehead I had made of me, except done properly, and the head actually bobbles. Look. That's all he does in the game, as well. Runs around with an oversized head wobbling about. Uh, no, I might be wrong on that. It's really nicely done. Again, the paint is bloody amazing. I hate to think how much... Oh, God, look, proper... Um, hang on. Proper print on these shirts there. I bet these would have cost an awful lot to produce. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know why I'm even considering it. I would never afford it. That's going to keep me amused for far, far too long. Good places to have wobbleheads include dashboards of cars and in the throats of people you strongly dislike. Anyway, you stand there, Pagan, on your weird like, terracotta leaf base. You can fall over it if you want. Oh, he hasn't! My god, I'm, I'm slightly worried. Maybe it's magical. Because they also gave you a piece of card with very, very stretched art. Oh god. Again. Mm, been on the shelf a bit long. Um, yeah, that, that should be much thinner than it is. But don't worry, guys. Oh, look, it has the rare 0 to 3 stealth onions. It's a wig, a little wig, so you can recreate his bizarre hairstyle yourself and look like this. And you'll be the talk of the town, so you will. More like, why is that freak wearing the wig again? But let's not get into that. And finally, this very nice thing here. One of the sort of most bizarre um, promotional items I've seen for a game. I really hope it's what I remember it is. Yes, it is. It is the Far Cry 4 snow globe. I shit ye not, comrades. It's got an excited elephant in it. Hey, look, there's all bits of paper floating into the sky. And he's got red dots in his head and a little face or something. Um, going to be honest, it's a slightly... Yeah, it doesn't look very Far Cry 4-y inside. I mean, I know the elephant's feature. Um, and it's not exactly as well put together as Pagan Min there. But give it a shake. And look, it's Christmas all over again. The best things to do, I find, with uh, snow globes is to drop them so they shatter and then leak all the fluid and bits of stuff all into the carpet and it's really hard to get it out of carpet. That's my tip for the top for you at home. Man, that elephant has some bad dandruff. Anyway, we're going to have to jump cut again because it's time for another massive box that looks exactly like this. It's Max Payne 3! Rockstar Games presents... So, Max Payne 3 was the third in the Max Payne series of games. <laughs> Keep up, guys. It's getting technical. Now, um, I quite liked Max Payne 1. I liked it quite a lot, if I remember. Played it all the way through. Had quite a nice feel to it, except for those stupid levels where you had to, like, run along a thin rail that was blood or drugs or something in different levels. Uh, second game, uh, got, sort of started off all right. Got a bit bored of that. Never bothered finishing it. Max Payne 3 had no interest in, to be brutally honest with you. Ah, uh, those were the days. This is the... Ch again, this is one I bought myself, and I think it's the cheapest collector's edition of anything I have ever seen. To, like, a crazy extent. It was, like, six pounds for, like, this giant thing and with the game inside. Anyway, what do you actually get? Because, again, I haven't opened this for bloody eons. Ooh, there's a box. Oh, the game is actually still in this one! My goodness! <laughs> Uh, it's probably because it had no resale value when I bought it, because if you could buy this for like six quid, I imagine you'd have got like a pound second hand or something. Well, that's exciting. What is in the box of delights? Oh, get, get back up there. Stay. Stay. Good box. Good box. Heal. Come by. Um, you want to heal? Oh, God. You're down just a moment, if I'm not careful. Here we are. We have... Oh, my goodness. Oh, a pin. I love, oh, no, it's not a pin. It's a, oh, it's a... Uh, Key ring that looks like a bullet and has Max Payne 3 written on it. 
There, can you read that with your eyes? Marvellous. Well, it's a nice solid metal keyring, I suppose there's that, but it's not really a very inspired design, is it? And a download code for the official soundtrack and the special edition pack. Wow, what a world we live in. If I have accidentally shown that on camera, please feel free to use that code and download the official soundtrack. I don't know what the special edition pack is. It appears to have this woman with a gun. What does it say on the back? Nothing, it's just terms and conditions. Well, that was exciting. Right, come on then. I'm really not expecting much from this statue. Although it's from Rockstar, they should know what they're doing, shouldn't they? Shouldn't they? I don't know. Come on. Oh, here we are. Ooh, there's another thing in there. Also, a nice picture on the back, which I now can't show because there's not enough room, of uh, Max wearing a very uh, sort of Miami Vice type suit. Right. The room is just full of giant boxes now. Hmm. I don't know what this is. I don't recall this being in there. Let's have a look and break the seal. And inside, dun 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 dun. I don't know. It just looks like a poster or a print or something. Um, yes, they are just nice prints. They're prints of spilled ink and some painkillers for Max Payne, which worked as uh, sort of health replenishment items in the first game, and might do in this one for a while now. Then there's morphine, and there's some drugs. Basically, guns and drugs imagery. Wonderful. Th thanks, folks. Well, I'll put those back in at some stage in my life. And finally, we get to have a look at... Oh, God. Ooh. I don't think I've ever opened this. Crikey. Um... Oh, yes, I have. Look, I've cut through the stuff. Here we are. Oh, man. That's making some horrible noises. Oh, my girlfriend can't stand the noise of polystyrene rubbing together. There's a useless fact for you. Right. Come on, Max. Oh, I like the floor. Look at that. Looks like proper um, glossy wooden floorboards that have been over-varnished with a load of bullets dropped on them. Definitely a bullet theme going on with this. Come yeah, on. That we call Max. Oh, he's got his 80s suit on. This may take some time. That's right. Oh, no, we're right. Come on. Nobody's going to believe you're a ghost. Also, kids, don't stand in giant plastic bags at home. You might suffocate. Here he is. Oh. Hmm. Right. The problems with this one immediately. Um, right. Design's pretty good. Ooh, he's been shot in the shoulder there. That's always a problem. Um, yeah, design's pretty good. Paint is I mean, not quite up to the others. They've done the stubble quite well, just with dark paint. Um, if they try and stipple it, it always looks shite on statues. Um, my problem with this is that the suit is far too glossy. <clears throat> it does look like he has varnished his suit and his shirt. The skin's not too bad. It's purely the um, clothes going on there. Oh well, Max Payne. What a disappointment you've been. Also, Max Payne 3 may be the quickest discounted game I ever saw. I remember seeing it for like three quid in second-hand shops very shortly after release. But no idea why the price went down so much. Massively overstocked? Who can say? Can you say, Max? He's staying quiet. You would. Face the wall, Max. You've ruined everything for everybody. Subscribe for more.